I teach a lot of piano, some voice. Those are just the top instruments. I would love to have more clarinet students, love the instrument. Um, saxophone, I also teach too. I'm willing to teach oboe as well. I do use um, the piano adventures. I use that a lot just because I have so many piano students. However, when I don't get a piano student and it's some other kind of student, I feel it out. I see where they're at, especially if it's a different instrument. There's just so many different things to kind of mention to a student, like how to put the instrument together, really? how to do whatever you do around here without hurting yourself, how to breathe correctly. Um, so that's what I really look out for. I see like, I'm almost like that teacher that looks at how that student is and adapts with that student instead of just doing one way only and then just hoping they will click you know well, for, for private lessons right so, is different. and yeah. it took me a little bit though to get into that little like flow of things at first I didn't really know I didn't really have much of a method to work out of I was just kind of like seeing where they were at and giving them what my knowledge was and then starting to work at these studios I had a better fundamental like set because I knew I had that group teaching experience so it kind of helped having that firsthand mm -hmm. and then going into the studio and start teaching privately and honestly like teaching privately has been so rewarding especially when that student comes back and all I see is that passion behind them they're wanting to learn more and you see their progress So that's how I ended up pursuing my master's at Long Beach. That's what kind of happened. I got my music ed degree and my clarinet performance degree at Sac State, and then I decided to pursue the whole uh, performance thing at Long Beach. What was cool about my time at Sac State, though, was that uh, music education degree, it allowed me to also teach little baby bands, so like elementary wow. band, and that was my first time ever teaching in a group setting, and I was like maybe a my third year at Sac State, going to my fourth, you know, so I was just like, all right, kids, you know, like totally winging it, just like, yeah, you know, yeah. like just trying to feel their energy, and I started getting a more fundamental grounding technical teaching technique down, and um, it wouldn't have happened without just being surrounded by all these wonderful musicians at Sac State, um, really with my professor, Sandra, she's really been such a huge role model in the way I teach. I started in fifth grade with learning the clarinet and it was just a really cool experience because I knew my dad played trombone back in the day but I was like what is this all about so I went on ahead and did that and my band teacher was a clarinet player but I was like that was the only instrument that was working with me so that's why I ended up because I wanted to play flute and I couldn't make a sound out of it at the time so clarinet was my calling and uh, it was so cool learning it I was I was literally that kid that would raise my hand and be like hey what's the next note that I can learn on here you know like so everyone was just like not really into it I guess but I, I realized in middle school that was when I really started playing like a lot of fun you know uh, songs we played like pirates and stuff like that um, really started to get my interest in knowing what else is out there and also how to make my sound a little bit better So I, I totally could play it, but it was just sounding really crazy all around so um, at the time when I was in sixth seventh grade I started piano lessons and I was still doing band at school So because of that my parents thought oh well you're in band you don't need clarinet lessons So that's why I didn't get any clarinet lessons, but because of piano it helped me with just reading music Right, so that helped so much just trying to figure out this instrument in front of me by the time I got to high school uh, It was a really scary experience because there's this thing called marching band that I didn't know about uh -huh. and uh, in the fall they were like like, that's what we're doing for the whole season and I'm like I just wanted to sit down and play music you know and then boom I'm starting to march and stuff so because of that one thing led to another and I ended up um, just being so involved with music in the band room I was always there without realizing right so I ended up becoming drum major too like my senior year um, right. junior year trying to really develop my skills my conducting skills and then pursuing it my senior year and that was so rewarding because it was so much leadership based that I didn't really know but it was like all thrown at me that I was willing to 
round it out together. And it was really cool because I was able to see how much I was growing as a musician and person, trying to help my fellow classmates through this. And um, so that was a lot of fun. And because of that, just loving music altogether, I kept going in college, and that's how I started studying with Sandra McPherson at Sac State. Sac State! Yeah, Sac State! You know, yeah. stay up! But, no, yeah, it was so cool. I still, like, it's it's still so remembrance. Like, I can still remember being there. Um, studying with her was so rewarding because I knew I was at a point where I could play the instrument, but it still wasn't feeling as comfortable for me. And for her, she was willing to kind of talk it out and willing to just always be there for all of us. That was the thing. She was like our mama, but also like just so good at what she does. So it was a really cool thing. She had that teaching ability and that beautiful sound that we're all aiming for. So she is definitely one of my biggest role models um hearing uh her play and stuff i didn't sorry going back to not having lessons what really drove me with clarinet was listening to orchestra music that was a huge thing in my life um that was all the time I listened to that when I woke up for getting ready for high school, boom, hit the classical station. How do I know? How do I remember? Because I remembered my sister going, we used to share a room then. She'd be uh -huh. like, turn that music off at six in the morning and it's just, ah. And I'm like, no, it's so beautiful, you know? Uh -huh. And just like really getting to hear all these sounds forming into this huge ensemble. It's just so gorgeous. And hearing those clarinet solos, I was like, wow, you know, like, that's what I can sound like. So I just kept listening to a bunch of um, clarinetists, especially Sabina Meyer, one of my okay. biggest favorites. Um, she, I just love her sound. Uh, Martin Frost got me, though, because of his technical ability. So it was just, like, me understanding and learning what all these people are doing with one instrument and how mm -hmm. I can start developing my own as a musician with this instrument. instrument I would say just really be um just always remember that you started for a reason and don't let go of that because sometimes when we're learning something so new and it may not click at first it scares a student away they may like think of it in a negative way but then I try to alter it into another positive situation so it's just always a great time for them um when it's online I always try to really open my ears, really seeing what's going on because it's just so, you know, screen to screen. So I really try to see what's going on. I even tell the kids, like, if I only see their upper body, I'll be like, all right, can you angle the camera so I can see your fingers now? Let me see that. And I will catch, like, students where they're playing like this or they're like this. And I'm like, wow, you see, now let's just lower that. There we go. Now it fixed a lot of things and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So if they, they are struggling online, I always try to see and detect why. Why? Where's the source coming? And then so they can feel more comfortable. That's the goal, especially for online learning, because it's just so different. I know everyone's trying to adjust in their own way, and I feel like I'm getting a better hang of it. And I always try to welcome them with this is not a stressful place. This is just for you to have fun and learn while you're trying to do school as well. Totally. You know? Yeah, I feel a lot stronger now, you know, and I just feel like from here I have a lot to provide and help with all of the younger younger learners out there. Um, definitely, we're all in this together, and I just want whoever walks through these doors, I just want them to realize that whatever's happening out in this world, you can come in here and we'll forget about that. We're just going to have fun and make music, you yeah. know, so that's something I really, like, try to cherish because I know it can get crazy, so... Yeah. <laughs> All right, Susan, thank you for uh, being part of the team here at CB Music Studios. Thank you. Have a yeah. happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.